Hi, and welcome to this new episode of In Search of Courage and Meaning. I'm Abby of Abby Keen Healing. I'm a healer body worker. And as I keep saying, I'm mainly a human being searching for her own courage and meaning in this pretty confusing world. And um, feeling so passionate about talking to other fellow humans about how courage and meaning and all that good stuff is showing up in their own life. And really thinking that when we share from that place of being open to share our struggles, we can really help others um, realize that we're all in the same weird boat. And so today I have John Watts with me. John is a good friend. He's a musician, an excellent pianist and a composer, and also a um, lifelong searcher for truth and meaning in this wacky world. And thank you so much, John, for being gracious enough to uh, be my next prey. And um, you shared something that really uh, touched me a while ago. And I was wondering if you will be willing to share it with others. And it had to do with a health crisis that you went through. And uh, would you be willing to open up about it? Well, thank you, Abby. Um, you're very kind. And, and um, I appreciate that you're giving me this opportunity to try to uh, connect with something that might be helpful for other people, right? Um, it's always through our uh, more challenging moments that we um, come to something that can be hopefully helpful for others, right? And then and there's this wish to to want to share it. So um, in our conversations, I really appreciate that you've made this space available. So hope it's helpful. Um, so you're talking about um, 2019, um, October 5th, I think was the day I, I wound up, uh, finding out I had one platelet left. Um, so a platelet count of one, um, or less than 1000, depending on how you do the, the count is, is extremely low. So, um, I was bleeding in the mouth. I woke up and I was like, Oh, that's funny. My, my mouth is bloody. So there wasn't enough, there weren't enough platelets to actually keep the blood coagulated. So I went to the emergency room and uh, got infusions and it started a long, long journey, um, which, you know, has continued till now. Um, and uh, I just had my blood test yesterday and I had 153. So uh, it came, you know, it, it, uh, it was a successful journey in that sense. Um, but I think any time that we have a health crisis, uh, there's a lot to be gained from it. You know, this is my, my second, my second biggie, I guess. Um, and <clears throat> so I'll just describe what, I, what happened when I was in the hospital bed. I was very fortunate, first of all, that I wasn't in pain, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting in itself. Um, I've had an underlying condition called CLL, which is chronic lymphocytic leukemia since 2015, um, and, and you didn't know it until you were admitted to the hospital? No, no, I, I knew it in 2015, uh, just before mm -hmm. I went back to graduate school. So I didn't pay much attention to it. Um, I think like a lot of people, I tend to not pay attention to things for a while. Um, and it wasn't causing any noticeable effects. So I pretty much ignored it. Plus, my doctor said, you're on something called watch and wait, which is until you, it starts to really flare up. Uh, we can just ignore it, right? And then, you know, when it flares up, we have treatments for it. So it's a, it's, it's an extremely, well, it's becoming more and more common, uh, especially in men, uh, especially over a certain age. Um, so I was kind of in the demographic. So, you know, it, I didn't like the sound of it, you know, um, the leukemia word really, uh, you know, is, is not a pleasant word, uh, even to this day. So make a long story short, I had a few kind of crises uh, along the way where, you know, an infection would really throw me off. You know, I lost my hearing for a couple of months, uh, being a musician, that's not helpful. 
Um, and then I had this really big one in 2019. And it came under at a time when I really uh, was not sleeping well. There was a lot of stress uh, where I was living. We had just moved to a new condo. There was a huge capital improvement project that uh, was not going well. So I had to get very involved. I had to basically get onto the board, uh, you know, and it, what was what was really stressful about it was that half the, the complex didn't have the siding and there was a lot of really, uh, really bad weather at the time. So I was afraid that, you know, it was really going to, uh, you know, destroy the whole complex, you know, in a way, because um, so there was just a lot of stuff going on. And then I had a lot of stuff going on uh, musically. Um, good stuff, uh, but the bottom line was I was not sleeping well, and so I uh, I got a virus, um, and then uh, that led to this bout of uh, of ITP, which is I won't use the long name, but it's mm -hmm. basically low low platelet count. So I'm in the hospital, and uh, I just kind of it all came to me that like this was not something that came from without, you know, and I've been fortunate in my life that when, when bad things happen, it's not that I want to blame myself, but I do see my complicity and my responsibility in the, mm. in the situation. Right. And it's just because it would always dawn on me that like, Oh no, I brought this on like my way of thinking, my way of doing, uh, my way of acting. Um, so, so hold it. Let me just ask yeah. you this before you keep going on. I feel like there is sometimes this realization like, oh, this is my part in it. And sometimes there's this realization, realization, this is my part in it. And then it leads to a lot of self-judgments, which create more stress on the system. Like if you only did this, then you wouldn't find yourself in it. So when you were there and realizing your part in it, how did you receive that knowledge or that knowing? Fortunately, that's not something that I typically go to is that judgmental part. I have that, but not in this regard. When, when I see that I'm responsible, it's like, oh, yeah, it, it, it comes without judgment, fortunately, um, which is interesting. Um, so, yeah, no, it just it, I just realized, hmm, you know, all these things together contributed um, <clears throat> to the situation I was in. And it's not to minimize the actual virus that I did contract, right? Uh, which was some kind of a, uh, a common, a common virus, you know. Um, but, you know, it's sort of like the tip of the iceberg, right? Mm. Um, and so I was sitting there in, in the hospital bed and I, first of all, I knew that I was going to do everything I could, but I started to realize how important my energy was right because being involved in in energy work for 30 you know 30 years um it wasn't a thought it was like a, a visceral experience that when i was in the bed and i was quiet and i could put all my attention on myself i was in this cocoon of energy um which I, you know, we all have, and either we inhabit it or we, or we, or we don't, or let's say we connect with it or we don't, but it's so. So, so was there also, yeah. uh, and I'm sorry, I'm stopping you because I don't want to move on before no, stop me. clarifying I'm, I can this. go on forever. <laughs> um, the cocoon of energy. Do you feel that when you put your attention and, and, and kind of are aware of it and kind of have a choice of how you spend it or if you spend it, did you feel like there was something that needed to stay unspread, like that you needed to contain it so that you don't lose it? Interesting how you put it, um, because in a certain way, yes. In other words, uh, what I understood was I needed to really protect this sacred um, connection with myself. Mm. And so I knew I, I had to be very careful what information I let in, what people I let in, what, what, what outside influences, not just because, because what they, happens, what happens when you, when it's the wrong person or the wrong information or the wrong influence? Well, well, you, you, 
anytime you lose connection with this energy, let's say with this feeling of well-being, right, which we all can experience, you know, we all have moments where we just feel, you know, complete, you know, maybe we just are in nature and, and we just sense, you know, that we're part of something, but we're, we're complete, you know, we're not caught up in an idea or in an agenda or a, or a striving, right? Um, so it's not so much that, that other influences pollute this, which probably is also true, but it's just that you lose this connection, right? Gotcha. I mean, maybe if, if, if you have this connection so, you know, so uh, embodied that, uh, you know, you can probably withstand a lot of other things, right? Yeah. That's another thing. So um, I, I just knew that I, I was in a fragile place that if I didn't stay here, I might die. So yeah. I had a lot of incentive. Um, yeah, yeah. The biggest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, and so then there were other things, but you maybe want to ask me a question before I go on to that. Okay, actually, yes, because I was going to let you continue. How was it for you to be in this place where you know this might end badly, that this might actually end with you not surviving, you know, sort of life and death? Because I feel like I can speak for myself. I walk through my life like there's a veil between me and, and the real visceral understanding that one day I will die. And that is the reality. And so all of a sudden you are, you are in a position where, oh my God, this is a viable possibility. So how, how is that place at that moment? You know, I think because I had had that experience, which I mentioned one time before um, earlier, I kind of crossed that threshold in a sense, right? Mm. You know, I, and so to make a long story short, when I had the pneumonia in 2013, um, you know, I was so uh, in line and doing the things that I really loved. You know, I'd spent a lot of my adult life getting to that point that I reclaimed, you know, my my right to make music and, and to compose and to um, play, you know, certain types of music and Brazilian jazz at the time. Um, so there was a feeling that I was fine. I, I could die and it wasn't really, uh, I wouldn't die with, with regret, right? So that's that's really where the, the fear of dying comes from that. It comes from, I didn't listen to myself enough while I was alive and now I can't do it, right? It's it's a very simple thing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of crossed that. So I didn't have that feeling, you know, in 2019. Like, it was just because I have so many things that I still wanted to do, it was more like practical. It's like, okay, well, what, what can I do to ensure the best, you know, survival rate? And yeah, you know, the frustration is in that nobody can give you that answer. And this is this is really the really where the challenge was for me because, you know, I'm I'm a you know voracious let's say consumer like we all are you know of of information, and uh, you know everybody has their answer you know for whatever I had, so I had to really navigate that because you can only you know let's say incorporate so many things into your healing journey but if you don't incorporate the right one you might not <laughs> have the outcome you want so that was really the the challenge it was you know who do i listen to who do i don't and you know ultimately i had to keep coming back to myself mm -hmm. you know, like and and realizing that and this was probably the most powerful um uh, learning from that from that time was that the healing was going to take place on an, an energetic level so that it really wasn't so much the modality 
everything can be a trigger. Everything can be a, an, a help, you know. And so I started to really trust the things that really, you know, made me feel alive and, mm -hmm. and, and, and hopeful uh, and made sense, right? Because I'm a mind, I'm a, you know, I'm a body, I'm a heart, and the things that, that seemed to make the most sense were the things that I was going to lean into. And yeah. a lot of times, a lot of times you can't, you can't, if you think you're going to understand your healing, you're not going to heal, you know, because the healing is so much deeper. And I just, it was so obvious to me again, maybe because of the, you know, I had a lot of experience with energy work and, and energy healing and, and meditation, meditation, you know, that, that ultimately the, the inner wisdom is so much vaster than, than what my uh, conscious mind can, I mean, it's, it's infinitely greater, right? You know, just and if you start, it sounds yeah. like there's an element of, of trusting that other place so that the fact that you've had all this practice in you already, that you can recognize what feels right in your system to lean into and what doesn't. So there's enough awareness to see how like your system, for lack of a better word, reacts to something. And it sounds to me, obviously correct me if I'm wrong, like knowing how to move from the doubting mind or the fearful mind, or this is not working, shall it work, blah, 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 to something that can trust a knowing. Does that resonate? Yeah, no, it does. It really does. I like how you how you put it. Um, and but I just want to also emphasize that there is a lot of value in the not knowing. Yeah. You know, um, it's it's always both. Mm. You know, it's it's. What I want to say is that if, because like, I know people that are trying to figure out their their healing journey by understanding it alone, mm. and and I and and I see you know, I see the limitation of that. Mm. So there's value in not knowing, and there's value in developing this this trust. And there are times when you don't have either, you know, and and that's you know the time in the desert that. You know, by grace of God, something has to come through or you have to walk long enough in the desert. I don't know how else to put it, you know. Um, but so uh, what is yeah. um, if, if you don't mind. Um, what is not knowing feel to you like not in an intellectual way, but what does that space of not knowing of allowing not knowing feel to you? Well, I think this is where having a meditation practice is really helpful, mm. right? Because, you know, if, if you sit long enough, you eventually uh, empty the contents of the mind and there is being, right? And there is not needing to know. I mean, it's a different, it's a different kind of knowing. It's knowing on a visceral level and it's it's is i really am very much i don't think just these days but i think in general I, i've learned that you know becoming embodied is so essential right to to have a connection with the body to listen to you know i say that that the body has a language but it doesn't have words right so it has sensation it has feelings it has pain it has right it has tension and this is the language of the body and you know, to to start to allow yourself to communicate mm. without words. Um, and if you're going to use words, then use words that are kind and helpful, right? Because mm. the body is listening, believe it or not, even to the words that we send it. In fact, it's always yep. listening. It's always listening, right? Um, but the body can't speak in words. So that's where we, and you know, the whole polyvagal 
you know, theory of 80% of the information that comes from the vagus nerve is, is from the body to the mind, right? So let's, mm. let's listen. Let's listen because it's telling us a lot more than we are listening to, right? Mm -hmm. And it never so, lies. Yeah. It never it, it, lies. It never lies. It's so, and that's the other thing. Like, is this all really part of this healing journey was that, like, the body doesn't lie, right? It, it's always trying to communicate. It's always trying to communicate, and the problem is I'm not listening, or I haven't learned how to listen, right? And that's frustrating, right? Because we're not taught how to listen. We're not taught how to be mindful. We're not taught how to, how to pay attention. We're actually taught just the opposite. We're taught to ignore yeah. it, yeah. you know? And, and, and really and that, we so, yeah. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> no, it's, I'm, just, I'm just adding to it. We're so desperately want to keep doing all that we're doing. And you were, you were going through so much stress in your life. And it's almost like your body had to break down and for you to stop. Stop. Stop doing this. Stop doing too much over, you know. Um, but if you listen at the beginning, maybe it would come as a whisper, you know, and there'll be some dialogue where you ignored, ignored until... It's like no choice but to take you to the hospital and make you stop. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's that is sometimes the way it is, and sometimes it's just literally because you've you've abused yourself physically. You know, I also want to point out that that I had my meditation practice was at the weakest of my life, and I'm going back. You know, I started when I was 28, so I'm 32 years of very consistent practice, but at around that time. Uh, and this is where, you know, where the devil is maybe a, uh, a little deceptive, right? I was really feeling quite successful in everything I was doing. Um, mm. And so I didn't feel I needed the, the, the practice as regularly in the morning. Um, and so anyway, it's just, I don't think it's non-related, right? I mean, right. I know that the lack of sleep has a direct effect on health. But yeah. um, there might have been, anyway, so, you know. It's, it's a learning process, right? I also wanted to see what was, uh, I had a conscious, you know, thought that maybe it's not, not, it's not necessary, right? And, and I don't think meditation is always necessary all the time for everybody, right? So I wanted to leave that as an open question. Mm. Um, because, you know, I also saw at, at times in my life that it became uh, a crutch, right? Or it became mm. like an end. And yeah. I saw this in myself and I saw this in others. So, you know, it, it's a fine balance between mindfulness, between meditation, and then work in life, right? And, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, you really learn more from what you do in life than from what you learn in a sitting or in a meditation. That's for sure. I think people don't realize that. You know, you learn by, you know, taking a being stand. Being engaged. Being engaged, getting the resistance, right? There's no learning without resistance, right? And, and, mm -hmm. and illness is a, is a fantastic form of resistance. It's, it's yeah. life saying, no, you know, stop. You know, uh, you know, you've, you've gone too far, <laughs> you know, um, exactly. And, yeah. you know, and so, you know, how to open up to the, you know, to that thing that I've been, I've been ignoring or not paying attention to, or didn't think was important, right? We, mm -hmm. we, we dismiss so easily mm -hmm. little tiny, little tiny clues. And, you know, this is part of the learning process. You know, it's like, we're learning to become conscious of ourselves, you know? Yep. And, that, and that's not something abstract. It's literally, you know, knowing oneself, you know, yep. Yep. it's often yep. misunderstood, I think, in, in that there's something out there that we have to understand. You know, like the universe is here, like the more we get into our body, the more we know ourselves, the more we know the universe. We, in fact, we can't know the universe except through our senses, through our body, through our inner experience. So yeah. Yeah. You, you can almost say that there's nothing out there really that I need to worry about. Um, paradoxically, you know. Yeah, yeah, and I resonate with that so much, even just from having COVID now for like almost, you know, three and a half weeks, and body constantly say, slow down, stop, really pause, and how pausing scares me, because it makes me face something in myself that is really hard, so I keep pushing, and every time I push, I become sicker, and I regress back, and all of a sudden, you know, I feel worse than I did yesterday. And I don't want to listen to this lesson. You know, my body's saying, stop it, stop it. And I'm like, no, I want to go because this is who I am and this is what I know. So there's some, this friction and it needs, something needs to be heard, like really heard, like, 
like tenderly heard? Um, and what is this like ignoring? I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I just keep want to, I want to stay with the way things are now. So um, really resonate. And, and so did you come out of this experience differently? I mean, have it, has it taught you something or has it changed anything in your life for you? Well, it set, you know, a, a huge learning trajectory, you know, um, I, I, like I mentioned to you, I, I went in and I started studying hypnosis, right? Cause I understood mm -hmm. how, how my thinking does affect my body, right? Yeah. The way I, the way I think about myself. So I really went into like, even though I don't have a mental health background, I really took a deep dive into somatic therapies, um, hip, hypnosis, traumatic, you know, healing, this kind of thing. Um, and I just wanted to be able to share it with people. So I studied, you know, I took a lot of courses, took a lot of classes and, you know, amassed a whole library of, you know, of information, but more importantly, practicing it with, with people. Um, because when this happened, you know, shortly after, uh, a year later, I was just starting to get better. Then we had the pandemic and I realized that what I was learning could be useful. So that's mm. kind of my hope is that, that what I've learned, I can share, um, because I just feel like there's just a huge mental health crisis. I mean, everything comes down to mental health in yeah. society. And unfortunately, you know, there's so many stresses on people today and not enough resources, you know, even though there's, there are lots of resources, not everybody's getting them. So yeah. I feel like everybody has to, you know, everybody who can <clears throat> lend a hand or a life jacket, you know, needs to put that life jacket on <clears throat> and you got to put it on for yourself. Right. Yep. So then, then you can, you know, and then, so the need is vast. Um, but that, that's how, you know, the healing, uh, my healing has been really interesting for me because I learned so much that I didn't realize, you know, um, about myself and about how I could even be useful, uh, mm. for, you know, with others. And so it's always exciting to learn more, you know, yeah, um, and, and learn stuff that, that, has practical value yeah yeah it's not just not so, just so, abstract and so so for your from your experience and everything that you've been through and your passion to help others too i i like to ask this question um if you can have people understand something what would it be well first of all whatever you're going through, you don't give up, right? That there is always hope. And to, to get out of one's way is not easy, you know? Um, and uh, as far as, 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 you know, physical healing, which there is no physical, so it's all spiritual healing, but, you know, as we understand it, there is physical illness. Um, there, there is a way, you know, the body is infinitely intelligence, you know, in, infinitely intelligent. And even if you don't have any spiritual background, it doesn't matter. You can, you can, you can think it through when you realize that your body is doing an infinite number of things simultaneously, not one after the other, right? There's an energetic blueprint. It's beyond DNA. The DNA is only a little factory. But if you really think through what is already happening in your own body, and you can use your mind to do this, you start to really live in awe of your own life and the miracle of your own life. And, and if you can tap into that, you know, that, that it's, a, it's, a, it's a precious miracle that you can live an infinite like experience through this changing body. And it's changing. It's, you know, it, we, it looks like it's kind of here for a long time or whatever, but it's constantly, it's in flow. Every cell is in flow. Every neuron is communicating. It's, it's extraordinary. It's extraordinarily improbable. So there must be something, you know, in a way behind all this, right? Um, but that's, that's your own, your own gift that's been gifted to you. And, 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 to try to, you know, acknowledge that, you know, on some level, 
is already healing, right? Right. You know, and that uh, you don't have to do everything, you know, you have to give yourself a fighting chance. So, you know, if, if you're consuming poisons, that's going to be negative. If you're consuming toxic news all the time, you know, like I had to stop watching the news like three months ago, four months ago, because I just, I'm a newsaholic and I just realized it's just not helping. You mm -hmm. don't realize it. Like I didn't think I was being affected, but two or three months later, my, my, my attitude got much, much better, mm -hmm. you know, from just doing that. So as just as an example, you know, it's like we have to be aware of what's out there or whatever. But we have to be more responsible for what's in here. Yeah. And, and if and if we're feeling toxic things or, or if we're judgmental or if we're not giving ourselves time to heal, you know, question that, you know, like maybe this thing knows more than I do. Maybe it knows mm -hmm. more. I mean, if I listen to it, uh, it'll teach me what I need to know. Yeah. And it's ready. To, it's ready to heal like really fast. You know, if you like that's why if you stop taking the poison, you're going to get better immediately. Well, but there's all kinds of subtle poisons. And there are poisons that come from our childhood and the traumas that we're not consciously aware of, right? This is where hypnosis can be hugely helpful. You know, energy healing, right? Meditation. Because there's unconscious things that are constantly affecting our health. In fact, you know, that's probably the cause of most of our health issues, I think. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, spend time with yourself. You know, go into nature. You'll feel better immediately. Yeah. Right, body. The body is super responsive, you know. Yeah. And I love what you said before. I mean, I'm like I'm feeling sort of the lesson is listen, listen, you know. But also, I just love the words that you used, being in awe, and the word miracle that you said before because from my own experience it's easy to fall into the negative the you know i can't or it's not or you know um but on the flip side of that there's always that attitude just waiting to be you know to be lit like wow look 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 at life and uh and then appreciation yeah, an appreciation rather than uh, taking for granted. And so thank you for those beautiful, beautiful words and, and lessons. And thank you so much for sharing this. Well, thank you for making the space. You're a very kind and you're a very generous person. I'm <laughs> grateful that you, you, know, you opened up something in me in the sharing and, and in the way you received it, right? If you were not there to receive it, right? This is also what's so important about our lives is that we we connect with each other in very profound ways. Yeah. So let's be responsible with that, right? Because yeah. you know we're, we're we're transmitting and receiving all the time. So anyway, I appreciate uh, the way you received. <laughs> thank you. And thank you anybody who joined us today for a little bit of connection. Thank you so much for being with us today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to my channel and help spread the love so that we can reach more human beings who might want some inspiration to live more courageously and authentically. And to learn more about my work and how I help women in their midlife reclaim their sense of purpose so that the rest of their life can be spent more joyfully, creatively, and more aligned with who they are now, just hop over to my website, the link is below, and feel free to sign up for my free consultation. I can't wait to hear the vision that you have for yourself.